Hello and welcome to this tutorial. In this video, I will be showing you how to use the exploratory above ground biomass density modeler app, which I developed in Google Earth Engine. The app is designed to model above ground biomass density using a combination of the JEDI Level 4A dataset, optical and synthetic aperture radar imagery, as well as uh, spectral indices. Please note that uh, this app is for research and educational purposes only. It's not for commercial use. Okay, so let's get uh, started. Uh, first, uh, let's uh, select our country of uh, interest. So we are going to use uh, Zimbabwe here as an example. And uh, for the protected area, we are going to select uh, Mafungawusi Forest Reserve Area in Zimbabwe. Okay, so let's just look for it and here we go. As you can see, the uh, boundary is uh, displayed on the uh, map. Right next, uh, let's uh, select uh, the optical image that we are going to use uh, for the model. So we are going to use uh, Sentinel-2 and we can also select uh, the bands for visualization. So here let uh, me use uh, band 11, band uh, 8 and uh, band 4. Uh, following that uh, we select our synthetic aperture, aperture uh, radar imagery. So we are going to use uh, Sentinel-1 here and uh, we, are going to, we are only going to display uh, the VV polarization so that you can see uh, how the imagery looks like. And then uh, next we specify uh, the date range. So here I'm uh, using uh, the dates between 2021, January and uh, May. So let's just, let me just input the date. Okay, right, so this uh, corresponds uh, to the peak uh, biomass growth in the uh, project area or in this uh, forest reserve area. The next, let's just uh, click the load uh, imagery. And here we're going to load our uh, uh, Sentinel-2 and uh, Sentinel-1 uh, uh, imagery uh, for Mafunga Yusi forest reserve area. Okay, so this is the uh, VV polarization for Sentinel-1 and uh, below here we have uh, the Sentinel-2 uh, imagery. Okay, next uh, let's uh, uh, calculate uh, the spectral uh, indices that we are going to use uh, for uh, our modeling purposes. So here we are going to use uh, the normalized difference vegetation index, the enhanced vegetation index, and the uh, soil adjusted vegetation uh, index. So if I select one, the app is going to uh, calculate uh, the vegetation indexes, or the all the three vegetation indexes, indices, sorry. Right, the indices are, are displayed. So we have uh, the soil adjusted vegetation index here. Uh, we have uh, the enhanced uh, vegetation index and then we have our normalized difference vegetation uh, index. Right, next uh, we want to generate the above ground biomass uh, training points uh, from the JEDI level 4A dataset. So we are also going to specify the same data, uh, the same uh, time period as uh, we have used uh, uh, for the satellite uh, imagery. That is uh, between uh, January and uh, May for the year uh, 2021. And uh, next, uh, we also want uh, to uh, filter the above ground biomass density uh, range values. So in this case, uh, the, I've uh, filtered between 0 and uh, 90 megagrams uh, per hectare uh, because in this study area, usually 
the above ground biomass density is around uh, uh, 90 megagrams uh, per hectare. So you have to, uh, to choose uh, the range for your uh, study area or a project area uh, based on uh, literature, literature, literature review or some other more confidential sources. Uh, this is uh, because uh, the JETA level 4A data set uh, usually uh, is a lot of uncertainties and uh, it has got uh, sometimes very high above ground biomass uh, uh, density uh, ranges. So you need to be very careful on that. Right. Uh, so uh, after that, uh, we also need uh, choose to choose uh, the scale uh, for the JEDI uh, data sampling. So here the sampling scale refers uh, to the spatial resolution uh, uh, of uh, the data extraction. Uh, for example, the uh, fine scale, uh, such as uh, 10 meters uh, here, uh, will capture more detailed uh, points. But uh, that means it is going to take uh, longer to process uh, uh, the data. Uh, in contrast, uh, uh, a scale say, of uh, 50 meters uh, is going to reduce the number of, uh, of, of the training points. Uh, but it makes the, the computation uh, uh, faster. But uh, at the expense of uh, the detail. So uh, you need to be very careful because uh, you need to balance uh, uh, between uh, uh, the scale and uh, computational efficiency. So this is uh, very important, especially for large areas. Uh, so for this case, uh, we are going to use the uh, 15 meters to generate our points. So if we click uh, the generate buttons, we have our uh, JEDI points for the project area. Right, uh, so the next step now is to extract the uh, training samples. Okay, so again, this is uh, very important uh, to choose uh, the appropriate scale at which we, uh, we extract the training sample. So what does uh, extract training sample means? Uh, this means we are creating a training data set that is going to contain uh, the above ground biomass density as the target variable and uh, the predictor variables uh, such as uh, the Sentinel-2 bands, Sentinel-1 bands and the spectral indices. So think of it as a kind of a, uh, a table that is going to contain these uh, data sets, right, or a kind of a data frame uh, containing these uh, uh, values uh, derived from uh, the from overlaying the JDI training points on the predictor variables. So as I said, uh, we have to be very careful here again for the uh, sampling scale because if we choose the final scale, uh, we are going to run into problems uh, uh, when we run the, the the final prediction. So uh, we need to. Uh, if we have got a very uh, big uh, uh, study area or the project area is kind of uh, large, so it's better to select uh, uh, a kind of a coarser uh, sampling scale. So in this case, uh, we are going to use uh, uh, 90, 90 meters. So let's uh, click on the extract training sample and then the app now is going to uh, to start extracting the uh, the training sample. So it's creating the data frame, as I said, that contains the above ground biomass uh, density. And then we have uh, also the predictor variables. Right, if we go down, we can see that here we have uh, a, a training sample size of uh, uh, 10,223. Right. Uh, when uh, the app finishes, uh, you can now uh, select the machine learning uh, algorithm of your choice. 
So in this case, uh, we are going to use the, the uh, random forest uh, model. Okay, and uh, I'm also going to to define here the training and then test uh, split ratio. Uh, this simply means that I'm going to use 70% uh, for training and then 30% uh, for uh, uh, testing the, the, the model. Right. So let's uh, click uh, the training racer button so that we start the training. Uh, please take note here that in some cases uh, there are some uh, uh, forest reserve areas or protected areas where there's a lot of uh, cloud cover. So in, in those uh, areas, uh, uh, some of uh, the Sentinel-2 bands may not have values. So these uh, now values uh, uh, may have an impact when you are running uh, random forest uh, uh, algorithms or if you are running a decision trees or k nearest neighbor. So you may have problems because these uh, algorithms do not allow now values. So if you have uh, that kind of problem, it's better to use uh, uh, another machine learning algorithm such as a, a gradient a, a tree post which is also available here. Right, uh, so uh, as you see, the, the app is finished uh, uh, training uh, the machine learning uh, model uh, in case the random forest uh, model. So we can see from the results here that uh, the training RMSE is uh, 7 megagrams per hectare while the test RMMC is uh, uh, 12 uh, uh, megagrams per hectare. And uh, the R squared, training R squared is 84%, while the test R squared is 66%. Uh, so there's a bit of uh, overfitting here, uh, but it's, the result is not bad. It's uh, actually uh, acceptable. Okay. So if you are happy with the result, uh, the next thing you do is uh, you click uh, the predict and display above ground biomass uh, density uh, button. And uh, as you can see, you are going to, to see that uh, prediction is in progress. So this takes a bit of time. Uh, so I will stop the video because it may take about uh, five minutes or less uh, to run uh, the RF model. Okay, so this is the uh, final uh, predicted above ground biomass density map. Uh, so if you are happy with the results, uh, you can uh, proceed uh, to download uh, uh, the predicted uh, above, uh, above ground biomass density map. So you can just uh, click the generate download link for above ground biomass density and then uh, a download link is going to appear so click the download above ground biomass and uh, in the next tab the download will uh, begin uh, will begin right so this is uh, it uh, one thing uh, to take note is that uh, uh, here the download map is at a spatial resolution of uh, 90 uh, meters. Uh, the reason is that uh, in uh, Earth Engine, uh, you can uh, download uh, the map at its uh, spatial resolution or at final resolution uh, in the Earth in, in the Earth Engine uh, code editor, right? But if you are outside the code editor, then uh, there are some uh, limitations. So you, you cannot uh, uh, export directly, say, to Google Drive or Google Asset. So this is why I created a link to download. But then the link also to download uh, is some limitations, the download process, I mean, uh, because uh, 
if uh, it is a uh, very high uh, special resolution say 30 meters it is not going to work so that's why i put it at uh, 90 meters right okay uh, so that's it uh, uh, for today's uh, tutorial uh, please uh, note that uh, this uh, app is still work in progress and there are some limitations uh, so if you have any questions uh, comments or suggestions uh, feel free to contact me uh, via email uh, which I included in the app uh, also I've uh, I prepared a detailed uh, user guide uh, which is available at iGeolabs uh, I'll leave all the links and the resources uh, uh, in the video notes uh, below so uh, those who are members at iGeolabs I can access the guide or if you want to access the guide you can sign up again uh, feel free to explore different uh, settings and uh, try uh, various uh, machine learning uh, uh, algorithms so that you optimize your uh, results right uh, as I mentioned uh, uh, the exploratory above ground biomass density uh, modular app is still work in progress so there's still uh, a lot to be done in terms of uh, further uh, development. So as we continue to refine and expand uh, this uh, app's functionality, uh, we are seeking uh, partnerships uh, and collaborations, as well as uh, sponsorships uh, from, organization, uh, from organizations that share a commitment uh, to uh, sustainable forest management and uh, climate uh, uh, mitigation so uh, we believe that this tool uh, can uh, improve uh, uh, the uh, government efforts uh, especially uh, to uh, map and uh, monitor uh, biomass uh, globally uh, in addition uh, government uh, forest agencies and international agencies as well as the uh, corporations are engaged in uh, forest conservation and climate change uh, uh, mitigation um, may also be interested in this uh, app so we have a lot of work to to do uh, so uh, if your organization is interested in collaborating or supporting uh, the continued development of this app uh, please uh, reach us uh, at uh, iGeolabs uh, uh, together we can sp uh, we can uh, scale the app its potential and uh, contribute to more accurate, timely, and accessible uh, biomass uh, maps uh, around the world. Thank you very much uh, for watching. Uh, see you in the next video.